Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to Anime King and today I'm going to be giving you part 13 of what if Naruto was personally trained by Kurama after leaving the village. Remember to get this one to 100 likes as usual, share this to all of your friends in your social media platform, and also guys, go ahead and check out the brand new episode of what if Naruto had the rarest bloodline over an Anime King 2. And over and making three, I post a brand new episode of What If Naruto's Betrayed by Hagromo. So go ahead and check out that. And if you're new, yeah, you heard that correctly. I have three channels Anime King, Anime King 2, and Anime King 3. So go ahead and check out them and enjoy. I post What If every single day for you guys to enjoy each day. Three What Ifs, guys. So yeah, sit back and relax. So without further ado, what is to begin this new episode? Start the intro. So the last part we left off, Snavi almost forgot that they weren't a part of the village with everything going on as Sasuke was brought back to the village. The ninjas were kept out of harm's way as they would heal up soon enough in time. As she was sad to see them go, she ended up giving the three of them a big hug as Gara's tank came up and pushed her away. She just smiled she told you why I'd take care of Naruto. As with that they headed off, they met Uncle up at the gate as Uncle took them and took a big picture with Hannah included as they made their way calmly back to the Hidden Sand. Arriving there, they were surprised when they saw the people looking at Gara strangely. More different than usual, it just seemed off like something was wrong. As they soon found out why though, when Konkuro called him Kazekage sama yes, Gara was elected to be the next Kazekage. That was a surprise for all of them. As both Naruto and Tewai made their way out as Gara, when they speak with the council, they finally came in back, even Gara seemed a bit well off. Yes, he was going to be the next Kazakage. A decision made by the council. He wasn't sure until they told him that he was right for the job, but he still needed time to think over this, so they left him be, as he thought. Both Naruto and Tewai made their way, spending some time in the inside as they really missed the place. Gara didn't come home last night. The two of them were summoned towards the Kazakage office as they realized he indeed took the job. Making their way there, Gara told him that he accepted the job as he was now the Kazakage. But there was things that he wanted to do as he realized that they were no match for the Akaske and the group was coming after them as he had some talks with Rakage. So he wanted Naruto to get stronger, strong as possible, at least wait until two years to improve his skills out there. And he also want T.Y. to infiltrate the Akaske. They had something with one of Sasori's spy, as they were able to get contact. So with that, Naruto was a bit sad by that, that he wouldn't be able to see his girlfriend and his friend for so long. But mission was a mission, as T.Y. went off to get infiltrated with the Akaske. To get herself be seen, so that she can become a part of it, she had to improve her skills as well, so that she wouldn't be seen as a lesser member. Naruto made his way. As he went to find the Jinjulke that belongs to Taki, making his way into the village was rather hard. He just ended up scaling a giant waterfall. As he came in, he heard some guys talking about how, well, even the Jinjulke was. As Naruto knew that many Jinjulkes were just mistreated because of what the hell, he found little girl. She was at least two or three years younger than him. The three guys wanted to hurt her. In a quick movement, Naruto disabled all of them. As he told the girl that some others are coming. She was afraid of Naruto but she eventually took him to where she hide. Inside of the base of a tree. As Naruto spoke to her and told her about the Jinjulkis. She didn't even know what exactly she was. She was surprised and shocked. So she was a Jinjulki as well. So yeah guys those basic guys we left off you guys can. Switch across the place and check it out for yourself. So what do you say begin this new episode? Four of their stomach. So you think I'm a Jinjulki thingy as well she said. Naruto nodded this time looking down sadly. My village hated me as well. They believe I was a tail beast sealed inside of me. They ignored me, beat me, called me names like demon or freak. Full eyes open wide. 
Nurka might have just explained her whole life to her. From what I know, it's the same for all of us. If we aren't hated, or feared, or we're exploited for our powers, the village keep us like we're some kind of weapons, hating our very existence, while exploiting our values, and expecting us to fight for them. My best friend Gara is a Jinjuki of Ichibai. His village tried to raise him into the ultimate weapon. Why are you here though? Why are you telling me this? Asked Fu. Because no one should have to live that kind of life, scrounging for the warmth and care that we need. As he stood up in a small room and for once Fu did not flinch at his movements. That is why I came to find you to help you. He took a few steps forward and she still didn't move. I can take you away from here. Somewhere to help you. Somewhere you won't be hated where you can have friends. Where people care about you he said. As he crossed the distance as he was right next to her. You can be one of my precious people. He held out his arm. The smaller girl nervously took his arm. And then you can start having your own precious people. The smile that he gave her made her heart warm. He just had a way about him of lighting up the entire room. She couldn't help the smile that came on her own lips. A smile that hasn't seen the light of day for years now. That wall that she built up to hide her emotions to protect herself from people came crumbling down. She moved on the instinct of a child and threw herself forward in a hug. Her small arms didn't make it around Naruto's body completely. As he hugged her back, thank you she mumbled into his chest as Naruto let her hug. Until she backed away as she wiped the last piece of tears away with her forearm. But how are we going to get out of the village? I tried before and the shinobis, they just took me back. Naruto kindly smiled turning to a foxy grin. Don't worry about that, you have me, he said. As he turned around, Fu was looking at him with awe. She never had anyone in her life like this before. The Takikage was always next to her. But he was always busy and she barely saw him. As Naruto turned back around, his eyes closed. He seemed to be focused on something. Before he nodded happily, alright, we're good to go. I need you to hop on my back and hold on tight. As he crouched down, she climbed onto his back and held on tight. Okay, this is gonna feel really weird. Try not to throw up if you can. Fu just stared back of his head as that was all she could see. Whatever he had planned, she was ready for it as long as it meant escape in the village. She felt a tingling sensation like electricity run across her skin. Her world went a bit fuzzy for a few moments but when it snapped back into reality she saw trees. As Nurta carefully lowered her off his back, she was a bit dizzy from the long range transport. He smiled as he pulled the kunai out of the bark and resealed it in his wrist. At least he knew now that the Fuji no Yuki work at long distance. Fu was looking around the awe at the small trees. She has never seen out here before at the smaller trees. Always at large tree in the village. She saw them once when she tried to leave the village but she never got close enough. She made her way to one of them and run her hand over the bark. As she smiled a bit. They are out of the village. How easy was that? How did you do that? What did you do she asked. It's a secret, he said. She pouted as Nurta found it cute as he chuckled to himself. Maybe I'll tell you later. She brightened up at that. So, are you a ninja? Nurta nodded. So can all ninja do that thing, she asked. Nope, only two people. Me and the four to Kage, he said. Fool looked around as he spoke, but she still listened intently. The man who made you a Jinchuai? As Nurta nodded a bit grimly. As Fu caught on to his discomfort. So are you some kind of freelance ninja? If you aren't in Taki? As Nurta chuckled in amusement, she was just like him when he tried to escape Kanoha. No, I'm from one of the other villages, he said. She looked at him a bit strange. There are other ninja villages? Yeah, a lot more, said Naruto. Come on. As he crouched down, she hopped back on his back. The wind rustled through her face, blowing her hair back as she was surprised at how fast he could move. Even for a ninja, Naruto's extremely fast, but he was stoning it down so he would not scare her. As he ran, he explained the villages and the ones that didn't have ninja villages that hired them for jobs and contract. Fu was happy that Taki wasn't a main village. They always tried to stress to her they were important in the world, but they were just liars. As Naruto wondered why she wasn't more knowledgeable on these things though, by now, she would have at least started Ninja Academy in Konoha. It turns out she was 11, and she would have started her training this year if he hadn't come. In Taki, girls start their training after the man. It didn't make a lot of sense. After a while, they set down in a clearing, and Naruto prepared everything they need. Fu watched him in awe as he tackled the fire and pulled out meat and vegetables from his clothes. She was amazed on how self-reliant he was and everything he did she asked him a question. He was more than happy to answer her questions. The last few days on his own had been rather quiet and he was glad to have the company with him. And the girl was just extremely curious. She hasn't known much things or talked to much people. Her curiosity was peaking at the moment. By the time, night became more daunting on them. Both of them were tired on their feet. A lot happened that day after all. 
Full surprise in my accent, she could sleep next to him. She didn't want to sleep alone. He smiled softly like a parent. When a child told him that they had a bad dream and didn't want to sleep alone, Fool surprised him a lot. He thought that she would be cold. Trying to put up mental blocks so that she could keep people away from her. But she was lashing onto him. As she finally found someone that showed her care and warmth. And she didn't want to let him go. And that was exactly what Fool was thinking. She found someone that cared about her like a bigger brother. And she wouldn't let him go. As Fool held onto his arm like a stuffed animal. And she fell asleep. When Yurta woke up, he was in his mindscape in the grassy field. The Kayubi sat across from him in her human form. And she wasn't alone. After the incident with Itachi, he never saw her took that form again. He asked her why she didn't. She just said they had their uses and it was uncommon. His gaze drifted across the other occupant of his mind. Someone who he was pretty sure shouldn't be here. It was a she he could tell. She was also young as she was into my escape. Bright green hair that run down her back with amber eyes. She was smiling towards him with a bandana on her neck. A white shirt that cut off at the stomach. And she was wearing a ridiculously short shorts with nothing on her feet and there was also six wings on her back three from each side they look like dragonfly wings she also had a long green tail behind her she rushed over towards him he didn't know what the hell was going on she grabbed him burying his face into her chest as Nurta blushed bright red from the close proximity to her chest but then she wasn't letting him go as he couldn't breathe as he wondered was she trying to kill him she finally let him part as she looked down at him with a bright, cheery smile. Uh, hello. The girl grin grew larger as the Kyubi made her way over. Naruto, say hello to my sister of sorts. Go me. Naruto nodded politely. Oh, you're right, Krama. He's cute. Naruto blushed again as she spoke about him. Um, Kyubi? What's going on? said Naruto. Fu, the one you rescued from Taki is a container of the seven tails. Go me here. The girl did a small bow at the mention of her name as she giggled. She was always the most carefree of the family. Komi just nodded. You humans are so just down to earth. I couldn't understand being stuck on the ground all day. It's just so boring. Krama sent her an irritated look. Much like siblings did. So you're the Nadabi, said Naruto. Komi nodded. So why does the KB call you Komi? She sent him a funny look. Her mouth twitching up at the side. Because that's my name. Well at least a close. Human approximation, she said. As Naruto stood there confused. Wait, wait, wait. He looked towards Kayube. She called you Krama. You called her Krama. Of course. What am I supposed to call her? Said Komi. Wait, you had a name this entire time. And you never told me Nurta asked. Hmm. It didn't seem important, Krama said. As Nurta off at that. It's not even my real name. Like Komi, it's just a approximation, she said. Fine, said Nurta. So what are you doing here? He asked. I wanted to say hi. I've been bored out of my mind for the past 11 years. Why didn't you tell the phone Nurta asked? The green haired girl shot a jealous look at Krama. Yes, look at jealousy. Not all of us are lucky enough to be sealed by an alternator of zeal. To pass our chakra through. Krama simply shrugged, looking bored with the conversation already. I have to wait before little fool is able to contact me, before I can even whisper in her direction. Never mind pass her chakra. Naruto nodded as he understand, as he knew that Gara's seal was different to his own. This is gonna sound weird, but why are you a human right now, Nurta adds? Komi looked down, cheapishly. It was the only way I could trick the seal and establish his mental link. He didn't really understand, but he nodded. Can you do something for me? She asked. Yeah, sure, said Naruto. Tell Fu that I'm sorry for the way she was treated. And also, she hugged Naruto tight. Give her that for me, okay? Time skip. As Naruto woke up, looking around, the place was still dark. Judging by the moon, it was probably 4 in the morning. He felt beside him as he noticed his eyes widen. Fu wasn't there. Looking under the blanket, she wasn't there. He sent her chakras, he sprinted off. Naruto appeared in the branch as she was on. She nearly fall as he placed a hand on her shoulder. Fu, what are you doing out here? You scared me, I woke up and you were gone. Fu looked up. She never had someone that was cared for her. Well being, or if she wasn't there or not. So it felt strange. I'm sorry, she said, she hung her head low. He sit down beside her. As he wiped the hair away from her eyes. She will have to get a haircut or something. Oh, don't feel bad, it's alright. I was just worried about you, as her entire soul felt rattled by that. Someone actually care about her, not just as a weapon or to gain her trust to do what they want, but actually care. What are you doing out here, Nerd asks. I don't sleep much, usually. A few hours a day, she said. But why did you come all the way out here, said Naruto. Well, that was rather hypocritical of him. After all, he did so much random things that doesn't make sense sometimes. 
that Tia Wangar have to ask him if he was insane. So wandering away from my camp, wasn't that too much strange? It's peaceful up here. As near to Nadia, it was night time. The place was quiet. All you could hear was the wind, moving, and the buzzing of the insect. Well, come on. Now that we're both up, we might as well get moving. We haven't even passed through the land of hot water yet. Fool Nadia, she hopped on his back. She didn't know why, but the further from the ground, she felt more at peace. Almost like she wanted to fly. Hm, that would be amazing, she thought. As Naruto packed up the camp and they made their way off. They stopped when they had to eat, but other than that, Naruto had phone his back as they made their way. She felt a bit bad that she wasn't really doing anything because he was the one carrying her. As she didn't know what she could do. By the time they passed into Frost Country, Naruto felt tired. As the long running, and also the place was getting chilly. Usually, this journey would have been nothing to him. But with the weight, even though she was not heavy, and the chilly night, yeah, it was a bit for him. In Kanoha, it was summer now, but here, he was deep. He was anchored deep in snow and ice. As Naruto felt full shiver a bit, as he started to challenge the Kyubis Chakra to increase his speed and keep him awake, as he wanted to get her out of the cold. Fu didn't know what was going on with Naruto. She was wondering why she didn't feel as cold as she should have though. They were standing in snow, but she didn't feel that cold. She felt like she was just in front of a, well, windy day. His back then got incredibly warm. And she wondered if it was because of the Jinjuliki. No, he said that he was a Jinjuliki. She probably wondered if it was because she was a Jinjuliki. That is why she wasn't so cold. But she was confused about something. Naruto, where are we going, she said. I thought you said you live in the sand. You said it's hot there all the time. But it's cold, she asked. We aren't going to the sand, said Naruto. We will eventually, but we can't go there for a while. I'm on a training trip right now, he said. I can't go back to the sand for about two years. Right now we're heading for Kumo and it's colder because it's up in the mountains. She pouted a bit. While she didn't mind being with him, she didn't like the cold. And if it was gonna get colder high up in the mountains, as Naruto was moving, his foot hit against something as Fu fly off his back, the boat with him crashing into the snow. Naruto picked himself up. You okay Fu? He asked. Yeah, I'm fine, she said. He was confused. What the hell did he trip on? He made his way over as he brushed away the snow to see a metal bar with a wooden plank connecting two metal bars together as he didn't know what this was. It looked like they didn't mine carts for the trucks and the mines and the sand but much much bigger. That is what he told Fu as he wondered what was the thing that traveled on this. It couldn't be a mine cart. It was too big for that. Come on, said Naruto. We should keep moving. I don't want you to catch a cold. As he picked her back up, she nodded as he moved off. A few hours later, they were out of the snow. As they entered the rocky areas, the mist was incredibly thick. After an hour of stumbling around, Naruto was getting annoyed as he couldn't find Kumo. The air also got a lot thinner the more he went, but the people they came across didn't seem to be concerned one bit. They got a few strange looks as they made their way, given their appearance and the piggyback ride. With a sigh of relief, they got above the clouds. A sight that Naruto never thought he would be experiencing, but the air was very thin up here. But the sight was breathtaking. A lot of mountain peaks stretching out in all directions, hundreds of feet, probably thousands high. The village itself seemed to be built into the mountainside. In the center of it all was the largest mountain Naruto will ever, ever see, encompassed by a building. The massive glass window in the front. Large walkways were built inside the peaks like bridge. He saw some radio antenna garden and training grounds. The site was unlike anything he's ever seen in his entire life and he was starting to understand how unique the hidden villages were. Well Fu, welcome to Kumo he said as girl had an awe look on her face as she looked across the village. Time skip. It was easy to get to the gates. The guards were steering his headband and the girl on his back he tried to get Fu off but she clung onto him tight. Um Fu we're here you can get off now he said. She just laughed slightly into his ear. What if I don't want to get off? He turned his head but she moved away so he couldn't see her. She usually wasn't this bold about anything. It wasn't productive in the village where subtlety and deceit got her food and clothing. I'm not a free taxi service you know. Fu disagree with that. Yes you are. That's part of being a big brother she said. Both of them froze as Naruto was shocked and Fu didn't mean to say that out loud. As his hand reached around and set her down, she looked down afraid of what he might say to her. But he then went on one knee and hugged her. I'm glad I found you, little sister, he said. Her eyes were shocked wide. Her hands trembling as she went up and hugged him.
Her little arms couldn't go fully around him. Not as much as I am happy you saved me, big brother, she said. He told her to jump back on his back, which she did quickly. Um, identification, please. As Naruto almost forgot, they were standing at the gates of the hidden village of Komu. The male gate guard didn't even know what to make of a scene he just witnessed. While the female member seemed as she wanted to tear up and cry, the man was rather large, impressively so, with muscle rippling all across his body. The woman was more light than silk. Both of them were dark, darker than Naruto has ever seen anyone before, even darker than few. He was told that many people from the stone and Kumo had a brown complexion, but he wasn't sure what that meant until now. Fu peeked her head over his shoulder like a parrot as she looked at them. What do you mean identification? I'm Naruto Uzumaki, he said. The gate guards looked exasperated. Everyone in the country must have identification cards to help. Against stress passion in certain areas, as Naruto never knew about that. In any case, he wouldn't have any identification for Fu because she didn't even know her last name. But he had to wonder, couldn't someone just steal the identification card and transform the person? He asked. The gate guards narrowed their eyes, wonder why an outsider with a strange headband was questioning their security. Anyway, I don't have anything like that. I'm from the sun with a message from the Kazakagi to the Raikagi. He whipped out the scroll and showed them the Kazakagi seal. Okay, but during your time in the village, unless allowed by the Raikagi, you must have an escort with you all the time. Naruto raised eyebrow and other villages weren't as tight with security as this. Well, he wasn't a spy, so he had nothing to hide. He shrugged. The male gate guard went off to find a Joni to escort him. So you call each other siblings. But from the looks of you, you can't possibly be related, the woman said. Naruto did not know what to say. Well, technically, I kidnapped her from my hidden village. She's a Jinjuki like me. Yeah. Nah, he couldn't say that. Well, she didn't have that many people to trust before I came along, I guess, said Naruto. The woman smiled kindly at him, as she did not pry. They waited around for a bit. Fu started to hum something. Naruto didn't know why, but he felt like he heard it before, but not sure where. The gate guard then came back with a Jonin. I couldn't reach it, he brought back. She had flowing sandy blonde hair that went down to her lower back. They were wrapped in bandages that kept it tight into two pigtails going down. She was slim in built, but she looked graceful. A tight fitting shirt that was black across the shoulders, but purple going down. Fingerless gloves and beads wrapped around her left forearm. She was wearing normal black shinobi pants with a purple slash on it. Her legs were bound with tape and she had the black sandals. Hi, said Naruto. I'm Naruto Uzumaki. The girl just stared at him as she didn't look interested at all. He didn't know why or what this feeling was, but it felt familiar. He shrugged it off as a word feeling or something that he might eat. And this is Fu, he said. The woman glanced at Fu before returning back to her normal, ignoring attitude as they made their way walking. Along the way, she kept on glancing as Naruto noticed her glance most of the time. As Naruto felt strange, he felt the Kumo Jinjoki nearby somewhere, but he couldn't narrow it down. He needed to get some information. So what's it like being a Jinjoki for Kumo, Naruto asked in a rather instant tone. But she looked towards him with hardened eyes. Stop asking questions. Why do you even care? Once you're gone, you'll probably never see me again. And if you do, you'd probably be alongside those bigots. The right Kagi called villagers. Naruto was confused as he catched back up with her she started to walk fast. What do you mean about the villagers, he said. Like you would know anything about it. Naruto's eyes narrowed at that. Try me. I had my share of problems with ignorant villagers, he said. The woman scoffed as she kept on walking. Please. I bet you had a few bulls when you were younger and felt her childhood was terrible. Naruto's eyes narrow as he didn't like the way she was putting her problem above others. He wasn't shallow enough to believe that he had a worse childhood. But this woman didn't even care to ask. I would hardly call mobs of town people with weapons out from my blood. Normal bullying, he said. You've obviously have some hard times in your life, but that does give you the right to belittle mine or full pass. We both had to live through something we didn't understand or had no control over. The woman paused. She turned. Finally, looking close at the country, on Naruto forehead, bang. Wait, are you a Jinjulki? Yeah, I am, said Naruto. I had hoped to keep that a secret so me and Fu can at least have some peace while we're here. But it seems, we're gonna have to find somewhere else. After speaking to the Raikage, the woman seemed shocked as she looked up towards the girl that was on Naruto's back. Yeah, Fu is too. He answered her unspoken question. What is this? Some cruel joke the villagers are playing. Who put you up to this? Did B put you up to this as a joke? Because we did. I'm gonna kill him. It's not funny. What the hell are you talking about, said Naruto. The woman grabbed his shirt roughly. I don't believe you, prove it. Naruto pulled her hand off his shirt despite her unusual strength. I can't. Flaring the Kayubi's chakra will bring a lot of unwanted questions and Fu can't even access hers. Damn it, he never wanted to reveal which Biju will carry. Well again, his headband was a dead giveaway. She looked a bit awe 
It wasn't every day that you get to meet the container for the most pompous bijou. In the elemental nation, she expected from the headband, but he confirmed it. I need to take you to see the Raikage meet us, she said. Strange rubbed in the back of her head. I gestured and Naruto knew all too well. Well, weren't we going there anyway, he asked, confused. She looked at him blankly. As she got her embarrassed blush, she turned to walk to the village. Yujito. What was that, said Naruto as he barely caught it. My name is Yujito, she said. As they made their way going around the tunnels and the bridges. As they finally arrived. Reaching inside, it was warm, but not enough to make someone sweat. It was just comfortable. She continued to lead the two of them as they climbed higher and higher into the building. Their journey came to an end outside of her brown door that had the plaque for Raikage written on it. A kind of looking, dark skin, short white hair, attractive woman looked at them. She nodded gracefully as Yujito opened the door and entered, followed by Naruto and Fu. As Naruto saw the most largest muscle man that he ever seen in his life, just the sight of him show off power and respect. His platinum blonde hair was done into a thick dreadlocks. The man was wearing a shirt. He had two giant golden bracers around his wrists. So you're the messenger from the Kazakagi. Naruto nodded, feeling a bit annoyed at being called a messenger. But he didn't want to say anything in front of this behemoth of a man. As he handed the man the stroll, the man large had dwarfed his own. He had to keep on reminding himself he was 14. Yes, he was 14. The man looked over the scroll that practiced eye. After a while, he spoke. This is interesting. I will have to give it some thought. But your Kazakagi requests are very... Reasonable. It's impressive for such a young man. I will have my reply ready in a few days. For you to return to the sandwich. I am sorry, Raikage Sama, said Naruto. I will be unable to return to the reply, said Naruto. And why is that? You are a messenger, aren't you? The man asked. As he looked Naruto over once, including a young girl that was clinging to his back. Actually, no, I'm just a close friend of the Kazakage. And I was on my way here anyway, so he thought the message would be safe with me. The Raikage accepted with a nod. And why? Might I ask, were you on your way here then? I was instructed by the Kazakage to go on a two-year training trip to better prepare myself for our future threats. The man narrowed his eyes. And why would you come to Kumu when Konoha is not only closer, but their allies with the Hinsan? San? Well, there are rumors that the two Jinjulkis in Kumu has full control over their Biju. The Raikage nodded slowly. He noticed Yujito tense at her position by the door. I have come to request similar training, or at least guidance, to control my own better. The Raikage didn't even look phased. A new contain, he asked. The Kayube, Raikage-sama. That time, the man did show some surprise. The last he heard, Konoha had the Kayube under their control, not the sand. So that this mean that the line of fire was lying, and they were weaker thanks to that loss. And what are your other reasons for coming here? Despite the man asking a simple question, Naruto felt like he was being interrogated. I have a light nafinte that until now has gone on train. The Kazakai and I thought that was wise to fix that for my upcoming conflict with the Akaski. The man of course knew what Naruto was talking about, as Yujito nerded her eyes. I should probably note that Fu here, as he motioned to the slightly frightened Fu on his back, is also a Jinjulke. She's the container of the Nadabi. If the right Kage didn't look all that surprised before, he certainly did now. These two extremely young Jinjulkes just walking in his village. If he was his father, they would have already been restrained, and he would be searching for ways to extract the beast out of them into better hosts. He knew that it required Uzumaki to house Yube. No one else would have the amount of chakra or it would be bad to seal it in someone that is not a baby. It would probably tear their coils apart. The girl was a different matter, but she seemed to be under the protection of the Kayube. And if this boy lost control here, the right of the Kayube was not something he wanted. I agree it would be in everyone's best interest that the both of you gain control over your bijus. Naruto was a bit surprised that the man included food but he did not show it. However, I cannot ask the two Jinjulki of this village to give out their time to train two outsiders. If they agree though, I have no qualms whatsoever. As the man nodded to Naruto right, as Naruto turned towards Yujito, her eyes roamed over his body up and down. It was like a predator eyeing up its prey. B will be fine with it, I'm sure. If the kid really needs that bad, I'm sure I can help where I can. The right eye and nods agreement as Yujito stood blank between them. Wait, you're one of the Jinjulki? The woman nodded, as Naruto felt bad, so she did understand. Hey, I'm save it, she said. You didn't know, besides it was also foolish of me to assume that my problems were worse than your own. As Naruto nodded, come on, we better go find B and tell him about it, she said. He will probably be alright training you, but with that man. Sometimes I can't tell, she said. The right guy just sit there as he watched him leave. They were led out of the village, on a stone, mountainside, somewhere different from the village. They arrived to see a man outside, 
He was almost Raikage size, it seems. He had on sunglasses, tiny black shades, with seven swords on his back. As Naruto wonder, why care so much? Did he think they were gonna break? After all, he couldn't use them all at once. Hey B, you will never guess what washed up in Kumo. Naruto was surprised at the relaxed way she spoke to the man. Considering the cold way she spoke to him, the man walked over looking intimidating. As he came in front of them, his shadow loomed over them. Yo miss too, what can I do for you? The place went extremely quiet. Did, did he just rap? This is Naruto and Fu, said Yujito. B looked them over. Well, look at the new Jinjoki's addition to Kumo. Miss 7 Fu and Mr. 9 Naruto. How did he know which one they held? Don't look all shocked or Hatsumi Pride will get mocked. Naruto sighed in relief, so this was a container for the ATLs. Maybe he had ability to sense all the other bijus and find out which tail they had. Yes, while not the most level head out of us, Jaike was a perspective oscopus. Wait, don't you mean octopus? You will see. Maybe, said the Kayube. Naruto huffed in annoyance. She could really get to him sometime when she held back information. He still hadn't fully forgiven her for hiding her name for so long. How did you know which biju we had? Or that we were Jinjuki at all? B looked over at Naruto seriously. He stepped forward and placed his finger against her forehead. It wasn't all that hard to find. I just had to use my mind. Yojito snorted, but B ignored her. You made it easy with your forehead protector. For little seven, I had to be an inspector. The sign has one. The hidden stone five and four. That's a bore. You want to know more? Three and six belong to Kiri. So here's my theory. That little fool isn't so Kiri. Because I'm right, Ananabi is in sight. As he raised his hand to the ear like a bull arm, he was moving his hand the entire time while he was rapping. Why are you talking like that, said Naruto. B wrapped the both of them up in a semi-hug. Let me tell you, Naruto, raps. The music of Ma. So when I say it's clear for me, it won't go any other way, you see? Naruto came out of the man hug and looked at the man strangely. Well, nice talking to you, B, said Naruto, as he didn't want to make a bad impression. I'm Naruto Zamaki, and this here's my little sister, Fu, and we came here to get training from you. Fu giggled a bit at Naruto to rap, as Yujito I started to twitch violently, not him too. As Naruto felt his bones creak, as a man enveloped in that dead grip, a hug. Fu wasn't feeling any better as he was on Naruto's back. Little Nine understand me, this is how it should be for Jinjulkis. B finally let go as both him and Fu dropped to the ground in a heap. What about you, Fu? Got any sick crime to spew? Yujito rushed over and grabbed Fu by the hand. Come on, little one. No way, B. I'm not letting you hurt this one. As she pulled Fu onto her back, just like Naruto did, and ran away with her. As Naruto was about to go after her, but B placed hand on his shoulder. Don't worry about Miss Seven with Yujito. She's gonna be in heaven. He wasn't sure what that mean, but B swing him around to face him. So you came to the killer B for training? Well, for you draining. For me, entertaining. Naruto felt a rather sinking feeling as Killer B smirked at him. Time skip, Naruto had to drag himself through the first hole of the house. For the first training, B told him not to hold back. He had to have control over his flow, over his rhyme. To that, he had to do physical exercises until his muscles screamed, begged him to stop. But he had to carry on anyway. And then he had to spar with B himself. Spars that he got beaten repeatedly in. He even pulled out the Harishin Kuna at one point. But he still wasn't able to win, much to be surprised when he saw the Irish in. And then the man pulled out his swords, as Naruto thought it was a cruel joke when the man pulled him out. He was about to laugh when he saw the man came at him. The man was like a maelstrom of pure death. He had to use kunai sharp in wind chakra just to survive the onslaught. He stumbled through the open door, he nearly collapsed on the soft rug right there and then. He only stayed standing because he noticed Yujito and Fu were standing in the corner. Both were looking at him with amused expression as he just stood there. Battered and bruised, merely conscious. While well, Yujito was amused, Fu rushed over. Big brother, she said. She was trying to check him over, but he placed a hand on her shoulder. It's alright, Fu, he said. I was just training. But she was still upset. But you're hurt, she said. As Naruto chuckled a bit, merely. Anymore, and he probably erupted into a fit of coughing. That just showed how hard I work. Her eyes start to water a bit. But why do you work so hard if it just hurts you? Yujito paused at the door. As she heard Fu ask that. I have to get stronger, Fu. There's a lot of dangerous people in the world that want to hurt me. And my precious people like you, he said. I need to get stronger so I can protect you and them. She started crying. She ran into him, doing her best trying to hug him. Out. Careful, Fu. I'm still a bit sore, he said. She backed away and blushed embarrassedly. Don't worry about it. Just know I'm doing this for an important reason, he said. She nodded as she understood. Even though she was a kid, 
you must protect your important things, even though she never had anything precious to protect until now. Then I watched train as well. So you don't have to bear that burden all by yourself, she said. As Nur to chuckle a bit, I would be happy to train you, but if you want anything better, you have to ask Yujito san or be sensei. As he turned to look towards Yujito, who was smirking, but now she was caught in the middle. Fu then turned towards her, her puppy dog eyes coming out at full force. Oh my god, said Yujito. In her mind, how could someone how could someone resist that puppy dog stare? It was just so precious. I guess I can show you a few basics, she said. Taijutsu and all that. But if you only have two years here, I don't think you'll get that far in your B2 training. As Naruto nodded, he was already planning on training Fu. The better she got control, the better. She was a Jinjolke. She could pick up things fast. Ko may seem nice enough. So she would want to help out as possible. That was only a plus. Alright, that's cool then, said Naruto. Yujito chuckled as Naruto looked at her strangely. Oh, it's nothing. You just sound like someone I know. Don't worry, you will see her around. All the guys eventually do. Well, alright then, said Naruto. As he fell, Big Brother Fu said. Time skip, Naruto flew across the rocky plateau as he twisted and landed in a three point stance. It has been six months since he came to Kumo. As he used his one hand to flip himself up, as someone came crashing down the rock platform, he barely had moments to move again. He was in his shinobi pants and sandals. As he was sweating heavily, they had been at this for hours now. The intense exercise, even overcoming the cold winter ear. As Naruto slipped to the ground, his attacker fist sailing over his head as he grabbed said attacker arm and flipped around, pulling the man and back to hold him in a submission hold. He smirked, but the man overpowered his hold and threw Naruto back. Once again, he dropped down into red defense, but the man held up a hand. That's enough for today, Naruto, but I think it's about time that we go. Yujito has been teaching you some killer move. It has been really helping out your grooves. Naruto smiled the compliment as he went over to where their gear was stashed. As he threw his training shirt on. Alright B-sensei, Fu and Yujito should be finished up now. We can go swing by them. The man nodded as the both of them made the way. B had a proud smile. One of his favorite things was that Naruto called him sensei. He was imparting his knowledge on the young and that was always fun. But Naruto hasn't quite taken the rapping. But he didn't dismiss rapping that much like most did and B was happy for that. They went to another training ground that was further down. As he made his way with a smile, going out to see Fu. Fu and him has really bonded in his time here. He couldn't wait to introduce her to Tewaya. He frowned a bit. It has been six months and he has yet to hear from Gara or his girlfriend. He understood that it might be difficult but it has been six months. But there wasn't anything to do about it unless going back to the side himself. But he wouldn't do that. He promised to return stronger. And he didn't believe that he was there yet. That wasn't to say that his training wasn't effective. He trained with both B and Yujito, as she warmed up to him quite well. B would put him through the physical exercise and training, his rapid growing, like Nafinte, Yujito helped him with his flexibility and his taijutsu. The both of them shared the same fact, that is Biju, all four is just like her. And the both of them helped him with his Biju chakra. He had no mass to the fourth tail, he can call upon it without losing his mind. The power boost that he got was unimaginable. It still hurt like hell afterwards, but it was more manageable now because her chakra was linked together. It took a week as Fu had made her way into her mindscape after riding a Kumo as she wanted to get as strong as possible. Komei chakra was flowing through her coils, widening them and improving them. But that wasn't the only era she trained in, Yujito had taken the girl under her wing. She was training every element of being a Kunoichi, Yujito's taijutsu mix. With Naruto ninjutsu and her all her own stamina made her quite effective. She was still a bit rough on the edges, after all she was still a young girl. But still, she was advancing quite quickly. The two girls had bonded though a lot, and Yujito accepted, Fu calling her big sister. Naruto wasn't jealous though, he still got to spend a lot of time with his sister. For as long as he remembered, he always wanted a family. Gara has always been his best friend. He could never look at Tewa like that again because she was his girlfriend now. But to have someone to call it a sister, it felt like actual family it was just undescribable. As Naruto and B made their way down, hey guys, Naruto had to blink twice as the sweat was glistening off Yujito's body. She was 19 and a very attractive 19 year old Kunoichi. He loved Tewai with all of his heart but he was still a 15 year old boy. He hid his blush as he walked over, waving to Fu who spotted him immediately. Hey big brother, you just met Yujito sensei did something awesome. Oh really? Or did I miss a Naruto? She changed into Manatabe, like full on and everything. As Naruto turned towards Yujito, a bit of awe in his eyes. 
she looked well a bit in bars at the priest fool are you sure this wasn't one of yujito genjutsu's remember that one that made you thought you live on a pirate ship where the guy could stretch his body like rubber fool sigh Naruto would never give up about that after she came home and told him about it no i'm serious she turned yujito come on yujito sensei show naruto that flame in cat form yujito chuckle fool is right i need to transform into my biju it's one of the many perks of being in full control naruto eyes widened he thought it was some kind of prank but that she could actually transform into it was impressive wow that's cool i love to see that i can't do it that often it takes a lot out of me and montabe naruto looked a bit disappointed he turned to ask me but the man was already gone hey Kram, can we do that something naruto asked but she shook her head why not he asked you forget naruto half of my chakra is still away in the stomach of shinigami even if you master all the chakra in your body it's still only half of my original power without my yin chakra we could never transform back in myself completely if you really wanted to when you reach that level of control you could simply hench into me if you wanted i guess i might find that flattering she said naruto shared a laugh with his tent it was a bit disappointing but it did get him thinking what is it like to get separated from half of your chakra not pleasant at all the shinigami drag it out of my body and i felt like i lost a piece of heat that would never be refilled still even though my other half i am still the most powerful she said as naruto thought she must have been immense before the ceiling even if half of her seal away, as she was still stronger than all of them. Big brother, as he blinked, to see a fool wave your hand in front of his face. Sorry. Just talking to Kayubi, he said. Anyway, I would like to see that sometime, Yujito. It would be pretty cool, he said. She nodded, the small smile. Anyway, fool, eventually. You should be able to transform the Komi by yourself one day. How cool would that be? Her eyes sparkled as she never thought of that. But, Yujito nipped it in the butt. Not to get her hopes up so soon. That will not be so easy, fool. I had to spend years refining my chakra control over Mantabi's chakra and you have more tails so it will be harder in theory. Naruto is only able to do what he does because of the way his seal is designed. So unless you get a master in Fuinjutsu, it's a long road ahead of you. Fu pouted a bit as she turned towards Naruto. Big brother, you know sealing right? Can you help me she said. I'm a bit too humble to call myself a Fuinjutsu master but I've been neglecting the feel a bit he thought to himself. And it always interests me. Alright, I'm gonna train myself in sealing some more. And then maybe then I can help you, he said. Full beam as she hugged him. As Nurka smiled after all. How hard could it be to find a Fuinjutsu master to train him? Time skip. It has been three months since he said that word. About the Fuinjutsu master. And he was wrong. It turns out Fuinjutsu was a dying art. The only person he could think of was Jerry of the Sani. The ones that he knew in the hidden sand. They were good but not a master. But he found scrolls in the Kumo library and they were effective. He read as much as he could, absorbing everything. He was told that he had an unnatural act for the subject. He just simply understood it. How they work together, how the lines tweak, how they tick. In fact, recently, Fiblin, with all the excess in seals was a pastime. Something he did when he had the time for it. Or he was able to increase the power and the time for the explosive tags that Kumo ninjas use with a slight modification. The right tagi had allowed Nurta to go into deeper scrolls that he had locked away in the library, seeing that Naruto did something quite, well, good for him. But any breakthroughs that he made, he would have to tell Raikage about them. He was glad to do that, as long as he get to train. But he also had another motive. The more he learned, the more he could find a way to remove that seal from Tiwai's neck. At the very moment, he was looking at Fu, as he was looking at her seal that was on her shoulder, as the girl was lying on her belly, as he had promised her to find a way to open the seal a bit more so that she could get more access. To Komei's chakra, he was just lucky. It wasn't the type of seal that would need a key, or he wouldn't have been able to do anything. It took almost half an hour for him to finish, drawing to the complex seal and tinkering with it. He looked towards Yujito and B, who looked rather bored for waiting so long. They were here just in case something went wrong. He felt rather insulted, they didn't trust his skills that much. Well, to them, he was just a kid, and they trust him, but just in case, as he alerted them that he was ready. Alright little sister, I'm ready to do this. If it all goes correctly, this will increase the rate Nadabi can pour her chakra into your system. Not by too much of course, I wouldn't want to hurt you. It's not going to be the most pleasant experience, but I ask that you keep still while the seal is completing itself. Fool not that she bite her lip just in case. With one last check, you're to channel chakra into his finger as it was like flame lit up at his fingertips as he draw the kanji. With a simple flick. The kanji started to spread over Fu's body. They twist and ride into a strange array that Yujito and B could not follow. Fu 
gasping pain that she felt it. It was like fire going through her chakra system. Naruto placed a firm hand on her shoulder, trying to ease as much of her tension as possible. A soft yellow glow started to appear on her body as Yujito and B tense a bit. But the seal just went around the other one. As she slumped down, the yellow glow vanished away. Naruto smiled. She would be unconscious for a couple of hours. But when she awoke in, she would feel the effects of the seal. But he felt proud of himself. This was the first successful immense test of his skills. And he couldn't be prouder. He's on his way to become a Fuinjutsu master after all. But guys, it'll be in subs right here. If you want to explore what you want to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, and turn on the bell notification to stay posted. But I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace.